Hello everyone, this is Rajaka Junjala. I am an educator at Anacademy and you can follow me in Anacademy Learning App where you can find my other course as well. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the different process behind the formation of Gate 2000 Par Gates. And please rate, review and share the video and also subscribe to Anacademy YouTube. Welcome again to the forming of Gate Eath. So let's start our discussion. Gate Eath is the most important part of gates because it takes most of the loads while in the service for providing the power transmission or the motion transmission, right? While in the service, it also undergoes different types of dynamic loading action. So the design of gate Eath is most essential part of the manufacturing of gates, right? So in this lecture, we are going to discuss about the different types of forming of gate Eath, right? So there are several types of the formation of gate Eath such as the sand casting, shell molding or investment casting, permanent mold casting, die casting and centrifugal casting. So these are the most commonly used forming process for the gate teeth. And the gate teeth can also be formed by using the powder metallurgy process and uh, by extrusion process where a single bar of aluminum will be taken and from that we have to form the gear by slicing it into gates. Okay? And gears that carry large loads in comparison with their size are usually made of steels. So if we want to have the gears which should have to have high load bearing capacity, we have to go for the gears made out of steel. And they can be cut by form cutters or generating cutters. So this is the process, the cutting process for the formation of gate teeth. Okay? And one of the newest and the most promising of the methods for uh, forming teeth is called as the coal forming or the coal rolling process in which dies are rolled against the steel banks to form the teeth. So this is the most uh, important process which is commonly used in nowadays. So the advantage of this process is the mechanical properties of the metal are greatly improved by the rolling process and high quality generated profile is obtained at the same time. So these are the very important objectives and the advantages of using this process that is coal forming or the coal running process which is used nowadays. So the, the gear teeth generation can be done by the machining process such as milling, shaping or hopping and they may be finished by shaving, burnishing, grinding and uh, lapping process. So these three, four are the, the finishing process for the gear teeth, shaving, burnishing, grinding or lapping process. And gears made of thermoplastic, may, we may have seen in toys and uh, some application where low load bearing structures can be seen okay so these the gears made of thermal plastic such as nylon polycarbonate acetal are quite popular and are easily manufactured by injection molding okay so they can be 3d printed also so this is the the easy way to form the gears which are made of thermal plastics so the the applications or the advantages of gears made of thermal plastics is given here these gears are low to moderate precision and low in cost for high production so if you want to have if you want to produce more number of gears, the gear value will be low. So, so the customers will buy them with low cost and they are economical and they are capable of light, capable of uh, handling light loads. So they can't be used for handling the large loads or dynamic loading actions. So they can be used for the for the light loading actions only and they can run without lubrications so these are the advantages of the gears made of thermal plastic and the main advantage is they they can be manufactured easily by injection molding process so here we have the one of the machining process for the gear tooth formation that is called milling in this process the gear teeth may be cut with a form milling cutters so these cutters shaped same as the the gear teeth with the tooth same tooth space so what we can see from this uh, this forming process is that the gear tooth which uh, which should uh, be used to form the uh, the required gear has to be have the same tooth space right so for different types of gears which have different tooth space we have to have different types of the milling cutters so this is not economical because we need to have different cutters for different gears so this is not going to be economical for example, if we have, if we want to have 25 teeth gear, we should have the cutter which can cut 25 teeth. If we want to have the gear which has 24 teeth, we have to have a different cutter which can make the 24 teeth gear. So this is the the 
main disadvantages of the milling process so a separate set of cutters is used for the se separate set of the gate tooth of spark gates okay so next we have the process the machining process called shaping in this process we have to generate the teeth may be by generated with either a pinion cutter or rack cutter so see here in this figure you can see a pinion cutter here this is the pinion which is the smallest of the two mating gears right so this is the mold that should be cut into gear so in this process this pinion moves reciprocally along the y axis and it will remove the material of the gear which has to be manufactured by making the the gear tooth so it removes the material by reciprocating reciprocating along the y direction right so it has to move while reciprocating along the y axis it will move like in this direction to so to fit the gear tooth for the required depth okay so it moves like in this direction and cuts the gear and it feeds along this direction okay so this is the formation of the shaping of gear tooth by pinion cutter as you can observe here here in this pinion every teeth is a cutter right so after completion of one revol revolution the whole gear will be formed right so this is the the pin and cutting process for the shaping of gear teeth next we have the 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 shaping process of uh, gear tooth by rack cutters so here in this figure you can see these rack cutters are straight right so this is the main advantage of rack cutters where we can manufacture the teeth or where we can shape the teeth with most accuracy and precision okay see in this figure this this gear which uh, this material which has to be cut into gear rolls uh, along this direction and this the rack cutter reciprocates along the direction which is passing through this page okay along this direction which is passing perpendicular to the page you are seeing so this is the advantage of this uh, the rack cutting process so this the rack cutter will move along the direction which is perpendicular to the, this page and it will feed into the gear material so this is the gear material so it will feed into the gear material by moving into this direction slowly and by reciprocating along the direction which is perpendicular to this page along this direction okay so after the completion of one revolution of the gear blank this is the gear blank we can see a gear with the required specifications so this is the the process behind the rack cutting process in the shaping of the gear teeth next we have the advantages of this rack cutting and also the advantages of the pinion cutters as you can see this pinion cutter has the cutters in the pinion right this because of this reason the gate teeth that is formed is not up to the mark but in the rack cutting process of shaping of gate teeth the rack cutter is straight because of this reason we can cut the gear blank into a gear with the most accuracy and precision so this is the advantage of rack cutting over the pin and cutting process so this is the process the shaping process behind the the gate tooth formation and after the shaping process we have to go for the 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 finishing process so the finishing of the gate it can be done by shaving burnishing grinding or lapping process okay so these are the process behind the formation of the gate tooth of spar gates thank you